Hi everyone, I'm Stacey Tobin, founder and CEO of Rice Collaborative. Welcome to On The Rice TV, where we feature incredible women and their story. Today's guest, Susan Sherman, is someone I've looked up to for many years. She has a real knack for creating excitement and momentum around new ideas. With a storied and glamorous career in PR, events and fundraising in New York, Paris, Atlanta, and our home of St. Louis, Susan Sherman has had a 35-year career working with some of the world's most famous and fashionable. She has helped transform the cultural landscape of St. Louis by raising funds and sitting on boards for some of the city's most significant art institutions. In 2014, Susan co-founded the St. Louis Fashion Fund to support emerging fashion designers and bring back St. Louis's international reputation as a fashion capital. Most recently, Susan co-founded Merch, an experiential retail concept bringing global brands in fashion, beauty, and home decor to St. Louis, and plans to expand to other cities in the near future. Well, hi, Susan. Welcome to our show. Thank you. It is an honor to have you. You know, when I was first starting out, everyone brought you up as a woman I needed to meet. Oh, well, that's so sweet of you to say. And I can remember when we first met, I was going to a Go Red event at at someone's house, and I was so nervous to go myself, and there were incredible women there, and you were just a ray of sunshine and so sweet and warm from the moment I walked in the door. Well, you've done extraordinary things, too. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yes, it's an honor to have you here. Well, one of our goals at RISE is to really inspire young women to dream and achieve big, so mm-hmm. much so that we connect our women, our high school girls, to our members. Right. So I love to start the show thinking about you in your high school days. <laughs> well, it was a long time ago. Oh, I don't believe you. Um, <laughs> I grew up in Jacksonville, Florida. Okay. Uh, my parents were from New York, but my dad bought a company in Jacksonville, so I grew up there. And high school was um, very interesting. It was a private high school that was once a hotel, then a military academy, and then I came two years after it became co-ed. You know, okay. they allowed women in. But, you know, I, at 14, I distinctly remember at 14, I had met an anchor at a local TV station. And I decided at that time that I wanted to be in broadcasting. Really? So that was your first? That was my first. And I mean, I really, I worked at the NBC affiliate, you know, on summers and then I cocktail waitress at night. I went to the University of Georgia mm-hmm. and because I had a great journalism school, I majored in broadcast news. I did a little TV, uh, public television, um, and then little things here and there, even in St. Louis. But it's just very interesting that I knew from that kind of early age yeah. what I wanted to do. Of course, what I'm doing now is something totally different. <laughs> well, that's why I love starting there. I mean, I'm, I'm not on the Today <laughs> Show, as you can see. But well, this it is was, close, right? <laughs> right, very close. But it was still um, beneficial in a lot of ways. Oh, you know, absolutely. just like you're doing what you're mm-hmm. doing now. I mean, it helps you. Present oh, absolutely! In I think front that's, of people, whatever. I mean, it makes you very comfortable. Yeah, and that's why I like starting with that question because yeah. when I was younger, you know, being a teacher is what I thought I wanted to be, yeah. and here I am now doing something completely different. Yeah. You know, and when um, I was first starting out, and people are talking about how fabulous you are, the reason they brought you up so often is you have been the co-chair and chair of so many galas and and fundraising events, and I feel like you sort of have the Midas touch, oh. you know. And so, what is the secret to your success with all of these? events. Well, I love to give back to the community. And I think um, if you're passionate about any cause and, you know, it's from the heart. Sure. People will open their pocketbooks. They'll give you meetings and everything else. Um, Mm -hmm. There was a woman, there's still a woman in St. Louis named Donna Wilkinson who did a ton of fundraising. And she once told me, you know, you can raise a ton of money but you can't raise a ton of money for like eight different organizations. You've got to really hone in on what your passion is. Mm -hmm. And um, I was on several boards when I first moved here. You know, it's the new person in town. I guess, um, you know, they need a new blood here, there, and everywhere. But eventually, I really honed in on contemporary art, where I was the chair of the Contemporary Art Museum, and now it's the St. Louis Fashion Fund. Right. And it's so much easier to focus and just give your time to one or two or maybe three organizations you know, instead of spreading yourself thin. And I admire the people that can, but it's not something that I can do. Well, and I think that's a great point because you are, when you do it, you're all in. Right. And you're really passionate about it, which is contagious. Contagious. Yeah, absolutely. And some say, I'm a little too much, you know? (laughs) Don't worry, I've gotten that too. You know, (laughs) I know. It's like some people work really well in groups. And Mm -hmm. I do with small groups of people that I've trusted over the years. You know, you start, you know, you know who you're, Florist is your best fundraiser, the person that's going to run the auction or whatever. Not that I miss gala events, too. But, you know, I've learned a lot. But um, I feel comfortable with a smaller group around. And, you know, I believe in goals. And when you set them, you meet or exceed them. And um, 
that's what we tend to do. So we've oh, been you fortunate. exceed them. It's impressive. Something I read about you is that you love to fundraise and you don't mind the ask. And I find that interesting because so many women I talk to talking about money, whether it's you know negotiating your salary or knowing what to charge or even raising capital for nonprofit or for profit, um, can be really intimidating to women. Well, you know what? It really is about the mission of the organization. Mm -hmm. And donors do not want to give to operating necessarily or sure. to hiring a next CEO or CFO or whatever. But if you say, this is what we need to get here, like this is our 10-year outcome, where we plan to be, mm -hmm. they're like, okay, I get it. Then I see that. You know, if you don't have goals, whether it's number of kids served or, right. you know, the economic development in the community or the number of jobs that you're going to bring to St. Louis or something that's really concrete, it's going to go like that. Yeah. You know, and I think just because I've been at it so long, um, because I'm old. <laughs> oh, stop it. It, uh, you know, you have a certain, a, a bit of credibility in the community, and I don't go back to the well unless I have something that is super important, and, mm -hmm. you know, important to St. Louis Absolutely. as well, the city as a whole. And I think that's transferable, whether it's nonprofit or for-profit or whatever you're doing, the idea that it, it the bigger picture, the why, right. and having passion behind it, right. and, and honoring your relationships and not going back, you said not going back to the well. Right. I think some people don't understand how to foster relationships. Right, right. And I, just like you, mm -hmm. we love to meet new people. Yes. I love to cast a wider net. Mm -hmm. If there's someone who's moving to town, they're always like, Susan, can you take care of this part? Seriously, or from overseas, or it doesn't matter. But um, I find transients people that just, you know, very interesting. Um, and I think you have to constantly be looking and, you know, it's, there's a big world out there. And people are, it's very interesting, people are waiting to be engaged. I agree. Some people are very scared to pick up the phone, but, you know, that means a lot to people who maybe mm -hmm. have been waiting for an ask or just waiting for a phone right. call. We'd be involved in this, that, and the other. So it's interesting. I've, you know, learned a lot over the years. And I think a lot of people want to get involved in the nonprofit world. They just don't know how or where to begin. What right. advice do you have for people who want to get involved? Well, I think... Um, Especially in a city like St. Louis, there's so much good and there's so many mm -hmm. different organizations. I think it's It can almost important. be overwhelming, I wonder, though, like this idea, this paradox of choice. There's, and I, I so see much that choice. in Denver and I see that in some other cities as well. Right. But usually, for instance, you know, I lost my mother to cancer 10 years ago. So I became very involved in Excitement Cancer Center mm -hmm. and the, you know, uh, cancer organizations. You know, if you love animals, Right. You know where to go. If you love fine art, you know where to go. If, for fashion, it's the St. Louis Fashion Film where we never really had a place to go right. you know, before. So I think if, you know, you have to kind of dig deep. Most people really have an interest and say, okay, I'm looking forward, I mean, I'm looking for an arts organization. So, you know, there's a Contemporary Art Museum, there's a St. Louis Art Museum, whatever. And the other thing about me is I really love um, taking a newer nonprofit and kind of bringing them up. And that was the case mm -hmm. with the Contemporary Art Museum. Yeah. You know, it appealed to me, and I just moved back here from New York, and I was looking for that vibe, you know, um, that you get kind of downtown gallery scene. Yes. And I found it at the Contemporary Art Museum, and they were so welcoming. But um, they were underdogs, you know? I remember, mm -hmm. like, our first gala. Again, we're talking about a party. <laughs> but, um, You're good at throwing that. No, where someone said, you know, I said, well, we have to raise $500 a ticket. You know, we have to charge $500 a ticket if we're going to raise this goal of ours, which was ridiculous at the time. And someone said, you know, that's what the art museum asks for a ticket. You can't possibly ask that. You're not the St. Louis Art Museum. And I'm like, you just watch. You know, we are ready to run with the big dogs. And we did it. And right. you know, it made everybody feel so good. So um, anyway, I, that was the Contemporary Art Museum. And even with the Fashion Fund, I mean, there was nothing. And we built it from the ground up. So... You know, there are big organizations and some people love sitting around a big table with 50 or 80 people. I prefer like really kind of rolling up my sleeves and, you know, getting the work done. Right. It's very stimulating. I mean, no, I think right. something you're good at is creating the buzz and the momentum and getting people excited. Yeah. Is that something that just comes natural or how did you learn how to do that? I guess it comes natural. Again, it's many, many years. I think um, it started, this can sound really ridiculous, like cheerleading in high school. I was a Were cheerleader as well. Okay. <laughs> See? <laughs> Um, <clears throat> I was a ballet dancer, okay. so I'm used to being on stage. I never was scared of talking to people. Um, but I do think, um, after years and years of doing things like this, you know, motivating people yeah. and getting people, whether it's men, women, it doesn't matter, kids, to do kind of the unexpected mm -hmm. or thing or getting them to stretch is something that I 
feel is what is a strong suit of mine, you know? Oh, absolutely. I've watched you in yeah. action. It's it's magical how well, you pull you people do, together. Well, and... you do it too, honestly. Oh, you really you. do. And it's a gift um, because you can sit in a boardroom of 80 people and they could just be, you know, on their phone texting or like, why am I here? But if you really give every single person a job or a way to get engaged, mm -hmm. it's simple. You know, again, you have to have a mission. You have to bring everybody together. They have to be seeing the same thing. But um, that to me is really gratifying. Yeah, and you're you know, good at it. Well, thank you. Yeah. So and, are you. Oh, well, thank you. I need to spend more time with you. Yeah. yeah. Well, and you did that. We alluded to the Fashion Fund, and we talked about it in the intro. You know, I love hearing about the history of St. Louis. And I think a lot of people don't understand the history of fashion in St. Louis. Can you share a little bit about sure, that? Sure, sure. Well, I didn't know a lot. I moved here from New York, and... Um, I was a consumer of fashion. Sure. You too much so. To the nine. But guess what? Now I'm all about recycling and all about giving, you know, this whole circular fashion sustainability thing has really got me. But that's probably a whole other show. <laughs> um, no, I moved to St. Louis and there were these incubators, fashion incubators that were opening in different cities. And some of our city leadership said, would you be interested in researching this a little for St. Louis? Um, we have the history here, mm -hmm. which was we were a garment center from the turn of the century to the to the end of World War II. And then we had Macy's here and a couple of other things till like the 70s. But we were doing amazing things on Washington Avenue and all around there. There was a garment district that was second only to New York. Yes, that's mind boggling, yeah. right? And we we discovered that, I mean, we um, invented the junior size that was in St. Louis. I didn't and we, know that. Hats, gloves. Uh, Washington Avenue was known as Shoe Street USA because of all of the shoe companies that dotted the avenue. So it was really a hustling, bustling center where everybody came to St. Louis, you know, to buy, to manufacture, design, whatever. It all went away. Yeah. Offshore, I can unions, everything yes. else. So we are trying to bring some of that life back. And surprisingly, or maybe for some not, um, there are 30 or 40 emerging brands in St. Louis. Mm -hmm. We just bought a $5 million factory, the first of its kind in the United States, to St. Louis that does high-tech knitwear. So we're the first high-tech knitwear facility in the United States. There's just a lot that's going on downtown. I personally believe in downtown. That's where the garment district was. I think mm -hmm. if you do not have a city, you don't have anything. So right. we could have gone here, there, everywhere in the suburbs, but I thought it was really mm. important to be an anchor in this district downtown. And that you know, if you build it, others will come. So yeah. we've had the support of the city and corporations, private individuals, and we're starting to like really get our sea legs. It's tough when you start a well, non-profit you're the and to raise all that starting from nothing. But I think people really realize um, that fashion is part of our city's story. Yes. So you have baseball, beer, hockey, art. Why not fashion? Mm -hmm. And it's sexy and it's glamorous and it's big business. So Yeah, and over these past five years, you guys have done some really incredible things with the Fashion Fund. Thank you. I am blown away. We continue to, to work and to, um, you know, bring... St. Louis to the forefront of fashion in the United States because er fashion is happening everywhere. You know, you could be in Nashville, Minneapolis, Detroit. Everybody wants a fashion center yes. now, you know. And um, people are looking for made in the USA. They're looking to reshore. So why can't be, be another epicenter of fashion? I mean, it's not just New York and L.A. They're too expensive. So I think we're getting a lot of traction now, which is exciting. Well, so. and I love it because, you know, for a while there, everyone's talking about retail's dead and, you know, fast fashion's everywhere and all these things. It's really evolving. What are some trends and things you're seeing? You know, when we see young designers come to St. Louis, I always say, do you want to be an artist or a brand? Ooh. Because to me, there are a lot of artists out there where mm -hmm. they sell two dresses a month, they can pay their rent, meals, sure. whatever, okay? A brand is different. You have to have left brain, right brain. You really have to have some business sense or a CEO who really knows what they're doing to really yeah. make it. But, um, and then the other, I think one of the other trends that's so big now is just this whole sustainability and, you know, the waste. Mm -hmm. There's a book called Fashionopolis that I encourage everybody to oh, read by a, yeah, a woman named Dana Thomas who's based in Paris and she writes for a lot of American publications. But it's really the definitive Bible now on what is going on in this industry. And it's not pretty. Mm. Um, you know, sweatshops and people that are underpaid. And, you know, young people now want to know um, where clothes are made, who's making them, what's their wages, what the conditions are like. Right. It's so much more um, than just yes. what you're wearing. Exactly. So anyway, that's, you know, so we're trying to evolve with the trends and the times. And we're about to recruit another class, another cohort of six designers at the Fashion Fund. So, um 
I think we'll find some brands that are really into sustainability and also into the knitwear sector since that's where this factory's from and they'll sure. have an opportunity to innovate there. So if there's a young person watching the show or really anyone who's interested in fashion, what advice would you give them about starting out or some things they should be doing to get themselves started, all that stuff? Well, I read religiously um, Women's Wear Daily and Business of Fashion. And Business of Fashion, which is based in London, is really incredible. Meaty articles about how to get started, entrepreneurism. Um, there's a lot of different, um, you know, uh, YouTube channels and websites on how to. Sure. To make some. So there's a lot on YouTube. Got it. Uh, one St. Louis native Derek Blasberg is the mm -hmm. head of fashion and beauty for YouTube. So he is in charge oh. of reaching out to the Naomi Campbells and the this and the that. And there is just a plethora of really good fashion beauty on YouTube right now. Um, I'd also say that there are high schools that have fashion programs. Yeah. There are nonprofits that do. Coca is always doing, uh, you know, fashion. I mean, all kinds of things, a uh, fashion program at Coca, which is the Center of Creative Arts in St. Louis. Um, you know, we have the internet, so it's like all out there. It's really all out there for you. Yeah. But as far as in St. Louis, I spend a lot of time talking to young people that are interested. And I'm talking about going to summer camp fairs and they're this big. Why can't awesome. why isn't there a class for me? To making a summer camp because we had so many young kids. You know, yeah, we, the fashion fund is yeah. something great. For so people. we do. We have a fashion truck that goes to schools. So as far as St. Louis, anybody can mm -hmm. call the St. Louis Fashion Fund and they'll point them in the right direction. I think that's Sometimes it gets lost, you know, that we are kind of a, I mean, we are a nerve center for fashion. And we get really strange calls sometimes, you know, like, I need the leather for this, or where do you find this class for a purse or whatever. But also from young people that are interested in starting classes and wanting serious classes at a younger age because they're very serious about a career in fashion mm -hmm. and design, which is very interesting to yeah. me. So obviously... The fun and the fashion talk in St. Louis is resonating because more and more people are interested in the space. And as you're a definitely business. bringing it back, the yeah. history. Yeah. Yeah. And so, what I'm hearing is really doing the homework, doing the research, and, and maybe learning some business too. Yes. It's very hard to learn how to build the business side unless you have help. And again, that's where we come in. We provide mentorship. And, you know, if you need a contract, we put them in touch with a law firm. If you need accounting help, we have those people. So, we're one-stop shopping if you want to make a go of becoming um, a successful fashion yeah. brand. Well, it sounds like knowing your strengths and weaknesses and then surrounding yourself with really smart yeah. people to teach you what you need to learn. That would be my advice. And, and speaking of strengths, this idea of a strength, I found recently that a lot of times strengths are also your shadows. You know, that's a very good point. And so I'm curious, with fundraising and just some of the things you've done, what has been a strength that's made you successful that you've also has been a shadow at times that you've had to grow and learn? Well, I was just in a meeting yesterday and uh, with our board chair who uh, we were interviewing development people, fundraising, and she said, um, we have very strong personalities in this room. I mean, people often refer to me as a strong personality. I take it as a compliment, but it does sometimes get in the way. Sure. Um, when you realize that maybe you can do something better, faster, more effectively yeah. than a team or whatever. It's Sometimes. hard to sit back. It really is. So, but I am what I am. You right. know, I'm not a millennial. I'm right. not in my early 30s, you know. So um, I am who I am, and if they want to engage with me, that's great. They know what they're going to get. I wear my heart on my sleeve. And, Absolutely. You know, well, I've been thinking a lot about how I'm not going to change. I, you know, I'm 40-something, but yeah. how can I shepherd my impact? Yeah. You know, I can soften at times. So I've been thinking a lot about not changing who I am and honoring my right. strengths, but also shepherding that. And I think when you're young and you are a go-getter, yeah. it's really tough because you'll hear that feedback quite a bit. Right. And it can sometimes get in your way. So, so I'd, like to, I'd like to really step back more mm -hmm. and, um, you know, utilize my skills um, less frequently, but, you know, for a bigger impact. You know, I mean, just one thing is I'm very interested in the whole revitalization of the garment district downtown. So I love working with developers and city leaders and, you know, putting the pieces of the puzzle together and, you know, the vision. I, I see it, you know, and yeah. how are we going to get there and all of that instead of, you know, I should stay out of the way of the day-to-day. -day. So, I'm, I'm, you're, you know, I'm, you're yeah. never too old to no, learn. Trust me. Learning. So it's, <laughs> it, it'll come. It will come. So what's next? What are you, what are you excited about? What are you working on? 
Well, I also started a company. I don't yes. know if you know this company. Yes, Merch. we talked about yeah. it in your so intro. So this is an experiential retail company that I started with a dear friend and fashion fund co-founder. So we're bringing brands and fashion beauty and home to St. Louis who have never been to St. Louis before. Yeah. And um, we definitely have an interested clientele here of 2,500, mm -hmm. I think, are on a mailing list. That, and what we're trying to do is bring either the designer of a specific brand or the CEO to St. Louis too, because I think it's really important with new brands or if you're interested to understand the backstory and the person behind the mm -hmm. brand. And we move these all over the city. Yeah. So it's like retail without walls and we've done three or four of them. And you know, that's been really fun too, because I, love the discovery mm -hmm. of new brands and fashion, beauty, home, whatever, and that's what we're doing. We're in February bringing someone from Paris, in April someone from Italy. You know, we had some gals from London that have this really hot brand now um, a couple of months ago, but it's also great because it showcases St. Louis because we're not just in one place, and yeah. we're very democratic. It's open to everybody, all different price points, so that's my latest thing. So between that and the fashion fund and just, you know, a husband, two kids, and a corgi. <laughs> it's like, I'm done. <laughs> you know. Well, you're definitely making waves in St. Louis where all things fashion and art. Now, our last question we love to end on is, here at Rise, we live by the quote, you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. Because I think it really shapes who you are, what you believe is possible, and can make an impact on your business. So I'm curious how that's impacted your life and who is one of your five. Well, I think one of my five is definitely my friend, um, partner in crime, Tanya Beasley Jolly. We That's spend a, a lot five. of time together. Yes. Is she your work wife? She is my work wife and just a dear friend. You know, yeah. I'm so glad that we found each other. Um, and then, you know, if I had to go beyond Tanya, I think it's probably the women that make up the executive committee of the fashion fund. We also spend a lot of time together, mm -hmm. you know, and I just love them all. They're so passionate and um, I just wrote them, out, I think, a really nice email for the holidays. Just, you know, how much... Uh, Ups and downs in entrepreneurialism. I yeah. mean, with nonprofits especially, but we've all stuck together, and you know we have a lot to celebrate. So, but I think Tanya would be my one, and then Madeline, Pat, Marjorie, <laughs> and Kathleen are my other four. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And what, yeah. they, what has she taught you? What's something you've gained from being around her all the time? Because I find with my business partner and stuff, you know, while we are very alike, we also are very different, and there's a lot I've learned from her. I and know. Grown. Well, we laugh because you know we kind of. Um, well, okay, what I've learned from her, I think which, what, what I've learned from her is what I do best and what I think she does best in a business. Mm -hmm. Do you know, we started doing everything together yes. and then became very clear that you need your responsibilities and so do you. She's um, not only super fashionable and just one very interesting gal, but very, very, very good at business. So that's, I mean, yeah. she's t helping me with some of those skills, you know, instead of everybody doing everything. So there's definitely a division of labor and I think she's great at, um, merchandising and kind of targeting these brands. And I'm more, I think, in the marketing and driving the business PR end of things. So yeah. thank we're you lucky. for asking. That's yeah. important. I mean, no, it really absolutely. is. Well, we're we're going to kill each other. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes there's those moments too. Well, we're lucky to have you in St. Louis. And I really enjoyed watching what you've done with the fashion fun. And thank just you. making St. Louis cool again when it comes to fashion. Thank so you. Well, I love what you're doing at Rise. We thank all do. You. This is a very special place. And... Um, you know, we're here to support you too, well, that so means thanks. a lot. Well, I feel like we could talk for hours. We'll just have to have you back on Thank another you. time. Great Thank seeing you, so you Susan. Thank you so much. Thanks. Appreciate it. <laughs>